All right, and with that, we say uh, good morning on this Wednesday. It's a busy news day here locally. Obviously, it's an even busier uh, weather day. When we're talking in terms of Florida, we do know that uh, the hurricane has made, laugh, has made uh, landfall. And back with that, let's go ahead and go straight to Matthew. Matthew, uh, what are you seeing now? Because we've heard it's all come aboard. Oh, it looks like you're behind the wheel. Yeah, most definitely. We are pulled to the side of the road right now, uh, Road uh, 98 east of Perry. And I got to say, we've had winds 80 to 100 miles per hour so far, thunder and lightning at the same time. But we just got a brief lull right now. So in the inner eye wall, you got these things called mesovortices. Essentially, they're like smaller swirls that contort the eye wall. And so you get one piece of the eye wall, one load that swings around with very strong winds, then a brief lull, then a very strong gust again. Moments ago, uh, we saw trees just tipping over, falling down left and right. Traffic at this point is mainly storm chasers. We just rocked quite a bit. We've even seen something called mini swirls, small tornado-like eddies only a few feet wide that come through and just swing through and add gusts about 30, 40 miles per hour. And right now, I don't know if you could hear that, but we just got rocked big time. Actually, can you see? I don't know if you could see that up there. But if we look out the window, I mean, my goodness, leaves are coming down. Uh, it's like a, a big batch of confetti, if you will, given these strong winds. We're only about 10 minutes away from being in the eye. But the closer you get towards the inner eye wall, the more furious everything is. Actually, ooh, look over there. Real quick. Do right. you see those trees just bowing down? So, again, we're getting gusts right now over 80 miles per hour. There will be a few over 100 miles per hour mixed in. That sign got uh, thrown for us. Uh, power's out just about everywhere. So if there are bandwidth issues, my apologies for that. In the next little while, we'll get into the eye. And basically, a storm like this is like a giant sink drain. All the air is spiraling towards the center, this vacuum-like vortex in the middle, the eye. The reason it doesn't fill in is because it's swirling so quickly that it's pushed outwards at the same rate by the centrifugal force. Like when you drive around a corner of the car and kind of force outwards, same exact thing. Again, right now, we're getting pretty intense gusts. And look, once again, another big confetti of leaves. And ultimately, that's how this is. On the inner eye wall, you get erratic changes very quickly. Uh, those trees, my goodness, we actually got hit by a piece of debris earlier on. And here comes another huge gust. I know it, it looks not quite as bad given we're inside the vehicle, but let me tell you, you know, this vehicle is a, a big, formidable SUV. It's rocking back and forth. And uh, Tucker, with that, I know that landfall has happened. We're just a few miles inland. It's getting bad right here. And uh, ultimately, the surge is a big issue, too, but we're losing trees just about everywhere. Oh, 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 oh. Matthew, can you hear me? Jeez. All right. Hey, yes, Matthew. I can, Holly. Yes. Okay. So, you know, early, early on, we were talking about that, you know, Ooh. it was supposed to make landfall later this morning, like 10 or 11. But then oh. I know you guys started talking about the fact that it was kind of falling apart. Did that cause it to, like, speed up? And then now we're seeing it make landfall at 8 o'clock in the morning? You know what's funny, Holly? In the past hour, this thing has rapidly intensified once again. That's because water temperatures near the coast are like 90 miles, uh, rather 90 degrees. And so even though this, this thing was ingesting dry air and beginning to fall apart, it rapidly intensified once more. In just that past gust, and we'll open the window real quick just so you can see, look at all the trees we lost during this TV hit. All those trees were there just a moment ago. We have like four different trees down. And I'm going to stick you out the window real quick. I'll, I'll be quiet, but just listen to the wind. It's furious here, and we're having just these uh, eddies, these, these big gusts of wind ricochet around inside the eye wall. But yeah, Holly, you're exactly right. It was supposed to come ashore a little bit later on. It was beginning to fall apart, and now it's just climbed once again. It seems like every hurricane these past few years has rapidly intensified for the last minute. This one, no exception. We know that some 140,000 people are now without power uh, there, Matthew. From, from this vantage point, I don't see a lot of people out and about. What have you noticed in terms of, of the people in the area? Have people taken heed to all of the evacuation orders? The only people out and about right now are storm chasers. I mean, the people behind me right now, they're storm chasers, too. You, you can tell. We're all actually at the same hotel. Uh, one thing I've noticed, too, in the hotel, you've had a lot of elderly folks, because understandably, they might have mobility issues, make it difficult for them to evacuate farther inland, their safety in numbers. I think when it comes to the general population, too, when it comes to evacuations, there are so many different nuances we need to consider. For example, do people have the funds to evacuate? Down here, especially, there are a lot of people who can't afford to take several days off work, can't afford to put a lot of gas in their car, drive farther inland, if they even have a ride to begin with. Uh, a lot of people, like you said, have those mobility issues, and so evacuations are tough. I think most people have been hopeful that uh, the storm wouldn't be as bad. At least we're far enough inland right now. We don't have to deal with the surge. But the winds will leave a very big mark. Everybody's without power. We're getting strong gusts once again. 
And ultimately, when you have winds 100 to 115 miles per hour, it will take them probably several weeks to clean up from this. So what is your plan of attack for today? Like, what are you planning to do? What are you hoping to see? So if we can pivot this way, you'll see it's a little bit brighter up there. The actual eye itself is like right over there. It's not a clear eye, but inside the eye, it's an oasis to come. So we're going to drive into the eye. We'll be there in about 20 minutes if uh, we can even schedule another TV hit. But yes, we plan to go in the eye, backtrack back to the hotel, collect my belongings. I have to work obviously Friday morning, so I'm going to be flying out. But we'll do some damage coverage too. If the roadways are passable, I'm fortunate that we scoped out all the locations ahead of time to make sure the roads would be all right for us to pass. Looking at it, though, it, it looks like there are so many trees down in the opposite direction. I'm a little worried about that. And if we hold it for just one second, I want you to see how quickly this little shelf of clouds is coming in. Here's another one of those mesovortices or kind of eddies inside the eye wall. It'll be accompanied by very strong wind gusts. That's how it is inside the eye wall. It, it's a very bizarre, strange place. But yes, this is a very high impact situation. And uh, we have a little long before action in the eye. All right, Matthew, please be safe. Uh, we'll certainly check in, but he, he's done this before. Yeah. And so we know that he's going to continue to monitor the situation there. And you're